Dr. Stuart Blanche. I'm the chair of the board of Our Rosher Australia. I grew up in the 70s uh, on a beautiful little creek on the north coast of Australia. And the creek I grew up on was called Swimming Creek. And in the 1980s, just when I was becoming interested in being a biologist, uh, pollution and sediment loss and nearly destroyed that creek. It still looks nice. But no one swims in Swimming Creek anymore. And my daughters, they never learned to swim there where, where I learned to swim. I wanted to make a difference so other people didn't lose their own creeks or their own ecosystems. And in the last probably 10, maybe 20 years, the climate impacts have become very significant. From about August 2019 to, to January 2020, Australia saw our largest ever extreme fires that burned for months. And that, that scorched right to the top of the, the canopy. No animals could climb up and get away and they, they stretched over hundreds of thousands of hectares. We, we went from terrible fires to uh, terrible floods, and the extremes really pummel nature, and, and us as humans and communities. It was like we were in a war. Deborah Reinstra, uh, a professor at Calvin University in the United States, recently wrote a book titled Refugee of Faith. This, these little pockets of life are then the source uh, that sends life back out uh, and into the surrounding areas. I'm still so inspired by nature. The great thing about nature, it bounces back. I refuse to let go of two things. The, the certainty of hope in Jesus Christ. I don't lose sight of the biblical promises of a new heaven and new earth and justice and no sin. And I refuse to ignore the science and the experience of climate and nature crises. As a Christian, I want to hold them both together in tension. And so a classic example of refugia comes from Mount St. Helens in the United States, which was a volcano. The lava flows and the strength of the eruption actually blew off an entire side of the mountain and destroyed a huge swath of forest. And ecologists thought that it would take many years for the forest to regenerate, uh, but it happened much quicker than anyone expected. And when people went in to understand how life came back so quickly, what they found were there were these little pockets of refugia that had been protected from the blast and life had been able to persist in these small unseen areas. And it was these little refugia that were able to send life back out to the rest of the ecosystem and bring restoration uh, and flourishing back again. And so the task of um, caring for God's creation and tackling climate change and addressing biodiversity loss is huge and often overwhelming. We don't have to do it all. We can start small where we are and we can be faithful to steward the life and to cultivate the life where we are uh, and that God can then take that and, and spread it beyond us in ways we might never even know or see or plan. The Word of God points us to the importance of creation care. I want to be optimistic, not naive and hopeful, and determined. That's the mindset I think we have to have. If we give up, we, we'll just lose more. Christians need to be the forefront of caring for creation and nature and the climate. It's not a distraction from the gospel. It's where we demonstrate that we are committed to loving our neighbour as ourselves and loving God who gave us this good world. Our forests, maybe like a lot of forests in parts of the world, they do not regenerate without fire, without the pain, without the searing loss. And that seems to me an analogy for our Christian walk where we need, you know, God counsels us and rebukes us. It's not an easy life, we must count our cost. So when forests burn and you look around, you cannot see a green thing, you cannot hear a single animal. But with time, with healing, with rest, uh, with reducing other pressures, there's life still inside. You know, after the fires, the thing you shouldn't do is look down and just see all the blackness. Go look up. Go look up.